Good morning. In my personal Bible reading over the last several days, I've been in the book of 2 Samuel. If you know that book, you know that it is largely about King David. And King David's life was something of a soap opera. Both his own personal life and the life of his sons later on. David had multiple sons by multiple wives, and there was strife between them. And in fact, in verse in chapter 13 and 14 of 2 Samuel, we learn that one of his sons, Amnon, fell in love with the sister of another of his sons, Absalom. And in the course of this love, he devised a scheme to bring this sister to him. He pretended to be ill, and then he raped her. But once he raped her, he was no longer in love with her. He threw her away, he cast her away. She went back in disgrace and lived with her brother Absalom. And from that point on, Absalom decided he was going to kill Amnon. It took him about three years, but he finally did it. And when he did it, he had to flee the country. He was a murderer. He could no longer come into the king's presence. So he left. When chapter 14 opens up, we learn that David longed to see his son Absalom, but he knew as the king he couldn't bring him back because he had sinned. So Joab, the friend of David, devises another scheme to bring a woman before David to tell a falsified story to help David understand maybe he should reconsider his decision. This woman said she was a widow, she had lost her husband, that her two sons had gotten in a fight, one had killed the other, the one son had been banished, and everybody was telling her she should never see him again, but she felt like she should bring him back because he was all she had left. And David said, I agree with you, I think you should. I'll issue a decree on your behalf. And the woman says to David, I beg your pardon, sir, but when you say that, do you not convict yourself because you haven't brought back your banished son. And then she follows with these words, like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be recovered, so we must die. But that is not what God desires. Rather, he desires, he devises ways so that a banished person does not remain banished from him. In the midst of this, Interesting soap opera story. There's these vital, vital words about the relationship God has for us. Yeah, we, we are like water spill on the ground. We're all going to die, but that is not what God wants. He devises ways so that banished persons will not be banished from him any longer. Now, we know that the biggest way that God devised a plan to bring us back was to give us his son, Jesus Christ, to send him to earth, to have him die on a cross, to eradicate the power of death, to wash away our sins, to bring us back into relationship, to have us no longer banished from him. But I think there's something more because even inside that relationship, oftentimes we become discouraged. We become hopeless. We feel separated from God in a way, banished. And the scripture tells us that God actively devises ways so that banished people will not be banished from him any longer. And I think in the same way that Joab brought this woman to give David new insights, so God puts people in our lives who will wake us up, who will give us insights, perspectives, encouragement, the ability to see through our distress, our discouragement, our despair. And so today, this week, I want you to think about the importance of this statement. God devises ways so that banished persons will not remain banished from him. If you're in the midst of a hopeless time, a discouraged time, take heart. God is working to bring you home. Have a great week.